take out your Bibles or your Bible apps. We're going to be going into the word of the Lord at this time and turn to the book of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 20 verses 14 through 17. Second Chronicles 20 verses 14 through 17. Praise God. Thank God for this beautiful day. Another beautiful Sunday. That's what Sunday should be. Always sunny. I don't like it when it rains or snows or anything on Sundays. Amen. Praise God. Second Chronicles. I'm sorry. Yes, I was supposed to dismiss the children. <laughs> Our children's ministry is new, so um, we're just getting things down as far as the procedures and how to um, dismiss them. But uh, Sister uh, Danielle is and Sister Nicole are taking their children out to enjoy this beautiful weather. I almost envy them. Maybe we should all go out to them. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. All right. Verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said to Haziel, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow go ye down among them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jerel. Ye shall not need to battle or to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Amen. 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 Today I would like to speak to all of us for a few moments on a sermon I have entitled, The Battle is the Lord's, Not Yours. The Battle is the Lord's. And Amen. Sister Alma is raising her hand because this is exactly what God does just about every Sunday. Uh, we do not coordinate with uh, Bethel or with one another. The Lord just gives all of us the same word, the same uh, song list, the same message. The Lord is moving in our midst and uh, he has led me to preach a, a message about the battle is the Lord's, not yours. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, that you are preparing us for battle. You are preparing us to do warfare in the spirit. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that the word that you are giving to us, the words that you are uh, implanting in our hearts, Lord God, would find good ground, Lord Jesus, and that would take root, Lord Jesus, in our minds, spirits, and souls, Lord God, and allow us, Lord, to be changed in how we attack these things that come against us, how we respond to the attacks of the enemy against us, Lord God, how we go forth into battle, Lord Jesus, not as fleshly men and women do, but as the servants of Jesus Christ, as your meek and humble children, Lord God, who are called by your name, Lord Jesus. Give us strength and confidence, Lord God, through this message and through the coming days and weeks, Lord God, as we do warfare in this time of warfare, Lord God. We praise you and thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Praise God. Folks, it's time for us to stop fighting our own battles. It's time for us to stop fighting our own battles. If you are like me and the rest of us, you are fighting at least one battle or many battles at the same time. We are living in a time of warfare. There is, has anybody ever heard of the culture war? Yes. Okay, maybe, maybe not a lot of it. We, social scientists are saying that America and the world really is, is, is we are fighting a culture war uh, in our land. And there are uh, folks on one side of, is, uh, of the issue and the other side of the issue. And 
The warfare is happening through our culture. What we are going to teach our children. What are we going to allow on Twitter and Facebook? What are we going to allow to be uh, shown in movie theaters and, and so on and so forth? And, and which state is going to allow abortions and which state are going to allow abortions and things like It's a culture, but there's warfare going on in the world around us. And, and, and it, it's not just the, the world around us, not just our culture, but it's each and every one of us are caught up in at least one battle at this time right now in our lives. Most of us are fighting on multiple fronts. Multiple, many of us are, are dealing with issues in our families, issues at our job, issues in our uh, uh, in finances, issues in our health. And it seems to be coming at us from one side to the other and, 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 and it, it, becomes, it could become very overwhelming. It could become very uh, uh, debilitating. Fighting is tiring, and it's a wasteful activity. Warfare is so destructive. And as a, a student of history, I can attest to the uh, stories of destruction and the, 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 the many uh, beautiful works of art of ancient history that have been destroyed by warfare. Families, whole nations wiped out, or, or cultures wiped out because of warfare. It is destructive. It is evil. It is abhorrent. Satan wants us to keep fighting. He knows it saps our faith and our energy. Folks, warfare is of Satan. War, God does not bring war on his own. He does not do warfare because he is a, a, an evil God with a breastplate on, an armor, a helmet, and everything. He's just ready to wipe out anyone who comes against him and that he doesn't like. No. God is a God of peace. Yes. The Bible says that right. he is the right. prince of peace. Right. And, and, and so whenever there is warfare happening or something attacking you in your life, that is not coming from right. God. Right. right. That's right. That is not coming from your Savior, the one who died for you. And it's coming from your enemy, the evil one, Satan, the devil. He is real, folks. If God is real and if heaven is real, we want to believe that these things are real then we have to believe that Satan is real. Although he is not the opposite of God, he is not a God in himself. He is a fallen angel, but he is very real and he has power because, like I said earlier, mankind has given him power over most of the earth. They have given in to his temptations and his lies and his corruptedness, his ability to corrupt us. I don't know if that's a word, it's corruptedness, but anyway. <laughs> he, he is a corrupter. He is a destroyer. He uses people's uh, pride and greed for his own purpose right. and their lust for power as well. Satan hates you and me because we are so precious to God, right. because we are so different from his children. God's children are so different from Satan's children. We have been given power and authority over Satan and his angels. Right. We have been given power and authority over them. And he hates that. He hates that we that, that God loves us so much and we are his beloved. And, and, and because of this, Satan is trying to separate us from the love of God, trying to separate us from accepting God's love. And trying to and he tries to bring us into his family of doomed children, doomed to death, hell, and destruction. The more time and energy that we spend fighting in life the less time and energy we have to serve God and fulfill our purpose in him. Folks, God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. Praise God. We have to understand this. We are not just placed on this earth, wound up like a clock and set to run out our lives and while God goes and plays golf someplace. No, God has created us for a special purpose. He are, we are his most precious creation. In fact, the, the earth, the animals, the universe was created for us. We are these walking, talking sacks of, of mostly water, guts and bones. But there's something about us that it makes us so precious and unique to God that he will do whatever it takes to deliver us from the destruction of sin that has been cursed into our lives from our time of birth. That's why he became one of us and he died for our sins, not being in sin himself, 
but taking on our sins so that we could be redeemed back into a place and a relationship of perfection with him. So Satan keeps sending us offenses. He keeps sending us strife. He keeps sending us sicknesses and financial losses. He is sending as much as he can against us so that we would be bombarded from all sides and we would take our eyes off of our relationship with God. Satan is depending on us to fight our own battles. Let me say that again. Satan is depending on you and on me to fight our own battles. To respond to these attacks in the way that we have grown up to respond to them or it comes naturally in our state of sinfulness to respond to them or how the world would respond to them how many times have we reacted the wrong way when someone cuts us off on the highway believe me i was driving in new jersey this past couple of days sister melissa i i had to apologize a few times <laughs> new jersey drivers i'm sorry if there's anybody from new jersey watching the worst the absolute worst I got cut off so many times, it was ridiculous. How many times have we responded in the exact wrong way? When somebody offends us and somebody comes against us and they offend us, they frustrate us, and they attack us. How do we respond? Satan is depending on us to respond in the wrong way. He's depending on us to return in kind that evil attack. He wants us to lash out. He wants us to operate out of our emotions. Right. He wants us to operate out of our feelings, right. our pains, our uncertainties. He wants us to figure out a way out of our own predicament. I can do this. I'm a man. You know, I know this, this feeling. It's like something's going wrong. I can, I can fix it. Let me fix it. Hold on. I can do it. We want to figure out our own way out of the right. predicament that we're finding ourselves in. Satan wants us to sin against those who have sinned against us. He wants us to respond in kind to someone who has hurt us with a jealous attitude or has cursed us or done something that has caused us to become upset. We want to sin against them and take revenge. He wants us to think that we cannot have satisfaction until we have received justice. I will not rest until that person gets what they deserve. Mm -hmm. yeah, be careful what you say, what you ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. What if you were to suddenly receive what you deserve? Mm -hmm. None of us would be here. <laughs> if we receive what we deserve, right. thank God for his love and his grace and his mercy that we do not receive what we deserve. And we must remember our salvation and the redemption that we receive through Jesus Christ when others have provoked us to anger. Abigail Van Buren, very wise first lady, once wrote, people who fight fire with fire usually end up with ashes. If that's all, if, if you're interested in ending up with just ashes, go right ahead. Fight fire with fire. But I'm here to say, and to declare that whatever you are battling in your life, God wants you to know that the battle is not yours to fight. The battle is the Lord's. Amen? Amen. The battle is the Lord's. Ephesians 6, 12. The Apostle Paul writes that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't fight against people, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He's covering a lot of territory here. And basically he's saying, look, that person that's offending you is not offending you. There is a spirit behind that person. There is a spirit behind whatever it is that's coming against you that's causing you to be upset and angry and offended. That spirit is what is really attacking you. And the way to defeat that spirit is not by attacking the person who is delivering that spirit to you. But that person is beloved of the Lord as well, no matter what their state of righteousness is. God does, 
not wish that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of eternal life. Jesus Christ even spoke and, and taught that we should love our enemies and do good to them who despitefully use us. Easy enough to say, right? <laughs> That's so easy to do. Whatever is coming against you has been orchestrated by sinister demonic forces in the spirit realm. Yes. Folks, the spiritual war, the spiritual battle that we're fighting is real. The struggle is real, as they say. It's, it's not, and, and I think more and more these days we're seeing the spirit world revealing itself, even to those who, who are, would be skeptical of this idea. Because we see it all around us in the culture wars, in the media wars, and, 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 and what's happening in our country just in the past, you know, five, six years or so. Whatever is coming against you was orchestrated by a sinister demonic force. You may think that your battle is only with the off that offensive loved one or friend or acquaintance that, that has hurt your feelings. You may think that your battle or your fight is against a disease. You may think that your battle is only with the bank that wants to take away your home or that uh, uh, landlord who wants to uh, evict you from your uh, property or from your home or your apartment. But the word of God is clear. You are not battling flesh and blood. The real enemy is pulling the levers and strings behind that offensive attacker that you are seeing and interacting with. And, and so the spirit world is using the carnal world or the natural world to try to force us or to cause us to become angry and embittered and, and uh, to lash out in our emotions and to sin against God and against other men and women. Fighting your own battles in your flesh will only bring you frustration and destruction. You will never truly be satisfied when you've found justice for that offense. You will never truly find peace when you have taken a, a relationship and destroyed it because that person said something offensive to you. You will not find uh, a, your bank account suddenly becoming full when you are uh, just trying to appease and, 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 and you know throw money at a problem that right. is coming against you that is not of this world, that it, it, it's being coming against you as a spirit. You will not find any kind of peace, any kind of fulfillment, fighting your battles on your own. King Jehoshaphat of Judah had to hear from God that he was not to try to fight his attackers on his own. The, the, the children of Judah were being uh, attacked from all sides by their enemies. It was an army that was greater than their army. There was no way they would have, be able to defeat this army. And so King Jehoshaphat had to cry out to God and had to ask God for help in de destroying this enemy and fighting against this enemy and responding to this, the attack that, is coming, that was coming against them. You and I need to listen to that same spirit of God today. We need to be listening every moment of every day to the Holy Spirit as it leads and guides us into directing us into battle and how to fight our war. It reminds me of the military system of ranks. When you have an army, you have uh, levels of ranks of men and women. When there's a group of men who are fighting on the battlefield and they are coming against opposition in the battlefield, the lieutenants are, are directing them and trying to get them to uh, the most advantageous position in which to defeat <coughs> their particular attacker. And so, uh, in order for them to uh, be able to lead their men properly, they need to have a better understanding of what's going on in the battlefield. Yeah. And so, that is why there are generals who are not just leading uh, a group of men, but they are overseeing the entire battlefield. They're receiving messages from the front, and they're receiving intelligence reports, and trying to put, put, put everything together so that they can help their lieutenants to guide the, the particular units into battle and, and to be in the most advantageous way so that they can win the war. And so the same thing is happening with us. Jesus Christ is our commanding general. He understands the battlefield. 
He knows Amen. what's going on. Amen. He is, and in the in the military, you cannot uh, do something outside of your rank. You have to wait for orders. Amen. We understand that. Amen. And, and, and when Jesus was on this earth, there was a centurion, a Roman centurion, who had a daughter who was very sick and, and who was dying, and he said he went to his men. Uh, to, to, he went to Jesus. And he went to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I have a daughter who needs to be healed. Please heal her right now. And Jesus says, okay, I'm going to go and, 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 and see your daughter and, and heal her. He said, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. I am a man who has authority over other men. When I say come, they come. And when I say go, they go. I perceive that you are one who has authority in the, in the world. Yes. And you can say to my daughter, be healed, and she will be healed, and it, and, and it doesn't matter whether you're there or not. And Jesus looked at this man, he looked around at his disciples, he said, I have not found faith in Israel like this man's faith. This is not even a Jew. This is a, a, a Gentile, but his faith is so strong, he understands, he gets it. He gets that whenever I speak the word, it has to be done. And we have to understand that ourselves. We have to be faithful enough to understand that when we are taking orders from Jesus Christ that we will receive exactly what God has called us, for, uh, the victory that we need in our lives and what God has given to us. Whatever or whoever you think you are battling in your life is not the real enemy. The real enemy is using those of, that you can see and hear and feel in your flesh to drain your faith and draw you away from God. You folks, this is how the enemy works. He knows that he, if he reveals himself with horns and with a pitchfork and, and, and says, you got to get, I ain't coming after you, then we're going to resist right. automatically. Right. We're, we're going to go to God and say, God, I saw the devil and only you can take him out. <laughs> but when the devil comes against us through other people, through circumstances, we are, as in our flesh, we, be, we are so focused on the natural world around us, we begin to believe that those, that God is not there, that God is not able to help us because I see this here, and, I, and they're coming against me, and I, I, I feel I have to defend myself. And so that's how we can be fooled by the enemy of our souls into believing that we have to fight our own battles. We have to be the ones that take the initiative against the enemy and go after him and try to destroy him. But folks, it's time for us to stand down. Amen. For the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Your battle is the Lord's. It belongs to God. Right. He is the one that's going to give you the victory. You are not able right. to provide victory for yourself. Right. Right. But right. through the power of the Holy Spirit, right. through the wisdom of Jesus Christ, you are able to destroy whatever is it is that's coming against you. Amen. Jesus has already defeated the enemy of our souls. Folks, this is a war that's already been decided. Like Sister Melissa said at the beginning of the song service, we read the, we read the end of the book. Yes. We win. Right. We are the winners. Jesus Christ paid the price for our victory on the cross right. so many years ago. And we have just celebrated his resurrection and his victory over right. the enemy. He cried out, it is finished. While he was on the cross, it is finished. What did that mean? It means that he has finished the work of salvation for all of us. And all we have to do is trust in him to fulfill that in our lives. Satan is truly defeated in that he cannot win even if we were he were to kill us. Even if he were to destroy us and cause us to be uh, put in our early grave, he still loses. Right, he right. still loses. Right. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Right, right. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Hallelujah. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. Folks, it's right there in black right, and white. Right. All we have to do is trust in the one right. who has received the victory for us, who has given us victory. Amen. All those years ago on the cross, all we have to do is trust him and give him that a power and authority in our lives, in our situation. Amen. There is no weapon that Satan can devise that has the power to destroy you. So why should we rise up in righteous anger and try to fight our own battles when we're attacked? Why should we try to do what only God can do? Why do we feel like we have the power and authority and the ability to do what God 
can only do. Amen? Why are we working so hard to figure out how to win the battles that we are fighting? So many of us are tired. So many of us are just beat up. So many of us are, 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 are you know, we, it's so difficult, Pastor. It's so hard. I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But, you know, it's coming from the left and the right. Why are, you, why are you fighting so hard? Why are you struggling so much? When we have been given the victory already, right. all we have to do is rest in the Lord. Rest Amen. in his promises. Rest in his authority and his power and his uh, truth. The battle is not yours. It's not yours to fight. It's the Lord's. Yeah. We need to seek his direction and his wisdom and how to deal with this war and with this fight. Folks, we fight with Jesus, right. not by ourselves. Right. We fight with Jesus. That is so cardinal to this. Right. We must understand that when we fight, we are fighting with him. It is he who is giving us the victory. Uh, it's like, you know, the, the, the infantryman on the field has an impenetrable uh, pillbox that he can't get past. He needs to fight with the tankers, the guys in the tanks who can come in and, you know, blow that thing up with their big gun and drive over it and, and allow for that infantry man to get through, past that obstacle. So, too, we must have Jesus Christ by our side to be able to destroy those things that have come against us that we cannot deal with in ourselves. We fight by being quiet. Right. We fight by being quiet, by being still. The psalmist said, be still and know that he is God. Yes. Be still and know that he is God. And we fight by declaring God's promises. We need to understand his promises. We need to know his promises to us. That's why it's so important to study the word of God and to read the promises that he has made to his people, to us. And we need to be praying every day in prayer and in relationship with God, allowing him to speak to us and to promise us those things that we need so that we can hold on to those promises and declare them in the time of attack by the enemy. We need to be praying in the spirit. When you have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, there is a special unction of prayer that comes up, especially in times of, of, of attack where we are connecting with the Holy Ghost and he is leading us into a proper way of warfare in the spirit right. we need to be confessing the word of god into our lives another reason why we need to study the word of god and apply it to our hearts and memorize it i remember growing up i went to christian school and i learned my abcs through scriptures uh you know uh what was one of the scriptures um uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of god that was a I, I'm trying to remember the rest. I'm sorry. Maybe later on I'll remember the rest. But I learned so many scripture verses. And that's what helps me when I'm being attacked and I don't have access to my Bible and I don't you know, have time to pray. I can re re revert back to my memory and grab those scriptures and apply them and speak them into my situation and confess them into that situation so that the Lord will come in and be my victory. And we win and we fight by thanking God for the victory he has already given to us at Calvary. Be Amen. thankful every day. Amen. Be gra gracious and, and have gratitude unto your God yeah. for what he did for you on Calvary and how he destroyed sin, death, and hell and the grave for us. And declare that victory for yourself. Yes. Let God do his thing. Get out of his way. Stand down, soldier. Amen. Stand down. Let the general come in and do what he can do. Jesus has offered us a power beyond anything this world could ever give us. His spirit living inside of us. In Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19, we read about after Jesus had sent his disciples to, uh, into the different towns and villages and told them to heal people and to uh, uh, cast out demons and all that. They came back to him in verse 17. It says, the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as a lightning fall from heaven. 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. This is something that God, that Jesus gave to his disciples even before the day of Pentecost. He gave them power and authority. We all have power and authority against the enemy in our, in, in, when we trust in the Lord and we allow him to be the one who leads us into battle. This is a prophecy of the birth of the church later on in Acts chapter 2. The disciples were assembled in Jerusalem after Jesus had ascended into heaven. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And from that day on, the apostles were able to fight the battles against the enemy of their souls through the spirit of Jesus Christ living inside of them. They were able to heal and perform great miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. They were willing to go up before the magistrates and be scourged for the truth of the gospel that they were given by Jesus Christ to preach. They had confidence. They had uh, authority. They had all the things that they didn't have in their flesh. The spirit of Jesus Christ living inside of them gave it to them and allowed them to be overcomers in the world that they were trying to reach for Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to 39, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to those who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It is the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us, the Spirit of Jesus Christ that we receive when we repent and are baptized in his name that gives us the authority and the power and the, and the, and the, and the, and the gravitas, the ability to fight the enemy and to know what the general is trying to lead us and where he's trying to take us so that we can destroy whatever is coming against us in our, in our lives today. And Jesus wants to live in your heart today. Amen. He wants to live and be your general today. He wants to help you to be able to fight against the enemy without uh, destroying yourself, without uh, uh, making yourself uh, uh, ragged and torn and bitter and, 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 and bruised and bloody. He wants you to have victory through peace, through quietness and stillness of spirit. He wants to give you victory through your ability to rest in him and to rest in his promises and to allow his Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into fighting the battle the way that it should be fought. It is through his spirit living inside of us that we can be led by him and we can have the power to be victorious over every enemy that comes after us. Amen. The battle is the Lord's. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That same spirit that gave Jehaziel the words to speak to King Jehoshaphat that day will be living inside of our hearts, leading and guiding us in how to fight successfully against those attacks that we are facing right now. Folks, if you have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, there's no excuse to try to be fighting those battles that are coming against you in your flesh. There's no excuse to try to be uh, leading yourself into battle, to warfare, and responding in the way that, uh, the ways of this world, or the ways of, of our flesh. But we need to be taking advantage of the Holy Spirit that's living inside of us. We need to be stirring that spirit every day, every, every moment of every day, asking the Lord to help us, to lead us, to do uh, the right thing when it comes to defending ourselves or to coming against the attacks of the enemy that, that is coming against us day and night. If you're going through str struggles and trials right now, if you're if you're facing a battle or, or two or maybe even more in your life, I, I invite you to come to this altar and, and to uh, lay your burdens at his feet and, and, and go to the general and allow him to be the one who leads you into victory in your battle as you struggle and as you fight the proper way, the way of the winner, the one who has defeated and conquered death, hell, and the grave. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Precious Lord, Jesus. Heavenly Father, precious Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that you are our commanding general. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us victory so long ago on that cross. And we claim that victory right now over every situation, every problem, every concern that we 
have, Lord Jesus. We rest in you, Lord God. We come to you in meekness and submission, Lord God, honoring your authority, honoring your might and your uh, grandeur, Lord Jesus, your abilities to do 